This is John Sage of Black Dog Cat and always listen to Music World Radio and the Dog and Crow Show. All is going on. All right, welcome to Dog and Crow. Music vlog. Um, we thought we'd do something interesting this week. Cause we Did went, we? We went to a gig in Birmingham on the weekend, as in last weekend. This is Thursday, of course. Yep. At the Flapper. At the Flapper. And we thought it's sort of like just doing a senior review because we uh, we obviously so we, we always plan to do something different, but we thought, you know, we went, since we went to a gig and we got three CDs by the three of the four artists, we would do something different. Yeah. So we thought we'd do a gig review. Oh. Now, uh, obviously, Birmingham is not far from us, like a 50 minute spot, isn't it? Yeah, it's about an hour away. A boy canal and a flapper and a pub. P- a pub uh, on the top, venue below. Yeah, good music venue We've there. been there a few times, and we've been to Among the Echoes quite a few times as well, which is on the axe. And uh, we, we were very lucky with parking, weren't we? Just sort of straight <laughs> I can't, yeah. I was surprised I'm like, not about that far from the flapper, straight in a parking lot. Yes! Literally that far from the flapper. We were, <laughs> we were right next door to it, and there was a lot of people who were like, Are you going? Are you going? Are you not going? What are you waiting in your car for? I'm gonna beat you. <laughs> we got in for free. Yeah. Well, uh, it's parking after six pm. Yeah. It's free in some yeah. seats. We in, uh, hit from people. Yeah, we did because they were looking there in the windows, going, "You, you stole our space." You just park here. Okay. You know, this is this is a good idea when you go into gigs. Get yourself prepped first because when you go to somewhere you're not that familiar with, oh, pissed out before you go. Yeah, do that, <laughs> right? But like, go, go and get some of yourself some snacks so you're yeah. not sort of hungry through yeah. the night and thinking about all rumbly. It's like it's about fifty minute drive from Birmingham to Birmingham. Where we yep. where we come from? Anyway. Birmingham. It's just like the inner city centre is just like, yeah, it's like no parking. You're gonna get fined. There's people are just like lots of different lanes and stuff. Well, there's a flapper. There's about seven car parks in like a like a um, two minute three minute walk. Yeah, but they cost about between like. Four and six pounds depends on the, on the hours, and that depends if you find parking as well. Because yeah. some of the, a lot of the car parks get very full very quickly. Oh, park, park before somebody else snaps it. Yeah, and <laughs> as, as well, we're watching. Really like, low, low. <laughs> Don't move. Yeah. Don't rock the boat. <laughs> uh, just a bit concerned as well about like, are we nicked a band spot like for their like their gig <laughs> vehicle? Yeah. yeah. Do not enter this space. <laughs> our space. <laughs> but it was like, uh, but the, all the bands the, uh, and, and the gig uh, crowd. They parked down at the flap. There's, there's where the bins are, or whatever, right around the side. Usual sort of venue style. They shove all the vans and cars and like gig stuff down there. Yeah. Um, they had a, a different uh, way to exit the stage, didn't they? They had different doors, and it went out of a different well, area. One thing I found about this time with the flapper, that flapper usually gets pretty hot pretty quick because you've got bands and equipment, you've got the crowd, yeah. and then it gets full. And it usually gets really hot really quick. But this time as well, went that way. I think there's some doors open there. Well, it was possibly this time of year because it's colder. Yeah. And actually, the back door, um, the stage door, kept on opening, and that was like, nice and cool. Yeah. But it's the loudness of that gig. Um, it's a very low ceiling. It's like vaulted ceilings, yeah. very low. It's probably like you know, just above your head, and it's booming in there. They have got a massive bass. That's what's massive. Basement. Yeah. <laughs> That's a bass. That's a bass. If you haven't got a basement like that, it's not a basement, right? <laughs> that's what I call. That's why a lot of my favourite venues is supplied because it's just a contained sound. It doesn't like go. Yeah, and you just get deaf instead. Yeah. What? Okay. And especially with the kind of acts that we saw that night, so <laughs> who were opening for Among the Echoes. <laughs> I don't know where Among the Echoes found these like uh, freaks. <laughs> that yeah, wrapped, wrapped in plastic. Wrapped in right. That was the first. They see like a. Plus we Rocky Horror Picture Show and the cabaret performance, like... But worse than that. From like, from the first outset, he actually got a baseball bat and re- wrecked the place. <laughs> yeah. but no, wait, wait, from, he from, be... from the first song to the last song, he did a strip tease. Yeah, but it was just mental. Uh, I mean, he had like a rubber <laughs> PVC sort of su- uh, skirt, dress. Yeah. He took the skirt off, he had some pants on with the fishnets, right? And then he's unbuttoning his shirt. But the bat... Right, um, the bat was like sticky, and I know this because he got like he had, this, he had this organ in his hand. I think it was like a, a heart or something with a barbed wire wrapped around. He's like, yeah, can you see that? Can you see that? Right, and then, I think at any other gig, do you know what I'm thinking? I think he was feeling a bit restrained because he was just like he just dropped it on the floor. And I'm thinking he's holding the baseball bat there. Why is he? Like, I think I think at any other gig, he would have gone like that and gone splat yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> and right into the audience, and they go yeah, so it's like licking him, it. Him doing mainly with, with, with uh, gruesome sound effects in the background, a woman on guitar and stuff. Yeah. That was like, well, it seemed like, it seemed like an eternity. <laughs> yeah, and he, he dropped the bat. Um, he, 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 first of all, he knackered this, uh, some statues, wooden statues. They look like sort of Greek. He was smashing this boy's head up. <laughs> and it was like... People were actually like, 
Yeah, uh, except for the fans, because they knew what to expect. Right. Yeah. But it got progressively worse. The, the, the bat <laughs> rolled over to me, and I thought, he's going to want his prop back. If that was me, I, I'd want my prop back. Yeah. But I picked it up, and I think it was all sticky. Uh, well, I don't know what that was. I don't know if it was animal <laughs> blood, remains, like entrails. I'm like, it, it go, mate. It's like, it's always oh, yeah. it's 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 like, <laughs> well, polish. Yeah. Yeah, oh dear. So, um, yeah, give it him back. But towards the end, uh, towards, uh, the end of it, it, it yeah. just got progressively worse. I mean, he got whips and paddles. In the last song, he was like, spit on me! Spit on This guy wouldn't spit on him. Come on, what? Three, two, one, spit on me! And he wouldn't. And then this, like, guy come out of nowhere, just running, jump, ah! <laughs> right in his chest. And he's only about, like, four or five. It's one of those acts where you don't want to remember, but you remember it. It's like, it's, it's like blowing your brain like a railroad. You song. can't, yeah. Uh, Performance-wise, I mean, singing. I mean, it was just screamy, shouty sort of stuff. The female guitarist, she was uh, pretty good at like yeah. chugging um, her stuff out. Uh, but I mean, yeah, performance-wise, and that was out of ten. I mean, the guy was absolutely off his rocker. I mean, that's like that set the precedence for the night. You know, no one topped that, <laughs> not even among the Echo. Well, the next act is actually complete opposite. But I, I, <laughs> I, my, my, apart from among the Echo, we were simple. My favourite of the night. They were a bit more subdued. See, see the web. Yeah, that's um, her. She was there with an umbrella. That looks very familiar. She reminds me of the of Banshees. You said that. Do you mean, um, do you mean in looks or singing words? Uh, both. Becky's the lead singer, Mark is, uh, does all the rest of the effects and stuff. And, uh, and they're animated, they don't just sit there. He's got a keyboard. I love, his, I love her outfit. She changed her outfit every performance. And, yeah. Uh, she's, she's got an like, umbrella with like web yeah. in it and like all these like skeletons. It, well, it looks like the Nightmare Before Christmas. I like the fact that the lyri lyrics are dark and they're obvious. They're, she's well spoken. But yeah. Some people can mumble their stuff, can't they? She had a vocoder on as well, but yeah. I don't think that was altering her voice. I just think it was an effect on her voice. I think she could sing in tune. But, the, uh, but he was mental as well. I mean, sort of like, they're very animated. Yeah, apart from Susan Banshee's uh, reference, because mm. uh, she says on the uh, SoundCloud and Facebook, I want images to come to mind because the sound effect put a uh, Claire Grogan type sound on her voice. Yeah. So, like, I'd highly recommend going to the web. Uh, the duo, they're fantastic. What would you call it? I mean, they all seem very similar. Different extremes. Was he goth? Yeah, goth. Yeah, goth. Yeah. So, but uh, I recommend because I saw a few videos on it because I didn't film any. I didn't film much like I used to, and I saw from like last year to like uh, an event. Event they put on like someone else, and I was like, I'm trying to watch other stuff like uh, to compare what they'd done before. I wondered if she'd been gone, uh, been going a lot longer than this because I mean she was quite a bit older. She didn't look it at all. I mean, no. there's only a few things that give her away, and that's only because I'm looking. Uh, but you know, she's she, she might have had like you know, her she'd grown up in the 80s listening mm. to all that stuff, so that's probably where her influence is. I was wondering, where she was she like doing things in the 80s? But there's not a lot on the uh, band biography. You're saying SoundCloud is the same as Facebook, but on mm. SoundCloud, I was reading that, um, yeah, literally just like three years ago, she was like, Can I sing? Uh, she just got into it like that. Well, the uh, the uh, well, not just promotions, which is uh, run by Jan Daughter, uh, Jan Dorbang, which we can talk to now, I didn't realize who it was. Um, uh, he'd record a bit. Now, the first track which I forgot, I didn't realise which I was trying to match the, you know, live with the CD. It's, uh, the one they did first, there's no instructions, and he goes down to Plastic Child and Death and Court, Death is Calling, which is a bit different in st some a vocal style for the rest of the album, I know, just when I'm playing it, so we'll be playing stuff, obviously, after this video. We shall find out. But they, uh, he reminded me a bit of uh, David Bowie, sort of like uh, eye wise and makeup, and very porcelain sort of skin. Oh, yeah. Had a white jacket on as well. I was like, is that really your skin? Are you wearing? Oh thing? yeah. Are you wearing a bodysuit? Like, kind of like, on, I was trying it? to replace it. Kind of like I think he's trying to re uh, re replicate Steve Strange out of, out of his art because I thought. I used to dress like that in the 80s, like the makeup on, the hairdo. Yeah. If you see videos, all of them. <laughs> if, if you see videos of that band, this is a band. I got this off a band for three pound on the night, and this CD is really good. Because I like, obviously well, again, oh, you've listened to this. Because so before the band, before the night, I didn't apart from my neckers who I've seen before. You have. I didn't list anybody up front like I usually do. And this this CD is really. Well, good. we were fairly up front. We were by yeah. the bar. No, what I mean is like hearing the music up front, see what they like. Yeah. And uh, that that a good CD. I don't know what the rest of they've got about three CDs out, I believe. Yeah. See, that's not badly. Oh, I don't know. Yeah. Oh, it's been printed and stuck on. They have uh, uh, so, but you know what? The, interesting the, artwork. The, the, so we all start. The, the sound on the CD is really good. That's that, they actually played that uh, on the night. Actually, I was checking. What's that? They actually played some of that on the night on on the album. Yeah. 
So, yeah, um, and those were the three bands we saw before they opened for Among the Echoes, and we were already like, what the, what's going on here? Yeah, because um, I, um, <laughs> I thought that, I, I didn't think Among the Echoes were going to headline, because uh, uh, Jan Doiban were on third. And there was something on the event about it being on until like 2am, and I'm like, oh! No, it was God. about 11. Yeah, but it was, well, it was 11, 11.30 oh, well, at the end. Could, uh, with most acts at these uh, independent nights, you've got like half hour each, or 40 minutes, or 35, then the main act's on for about an hour, 45 minutes. Yeah. But, uh, they did say 2am, like, I think Meow said it was going to be on I think just the and I was like, oh, I'm going to need a fur moss, I'm going to need a bed. <laughs> uh, those are three acts, and then obviously the main act, which we've seen numerous times, and we obviously put uh, they, they, uh, this is basically uh, part of Nitro Promotions. Eight is or eight or among the echoes. Among the echoes. Woo-hoo-hoo, you hear that big fan in the back room? Now, yeah, this has been our two years' album. The reason why we were showing this because uh, this is actually the main product of uh, Among the Echoes. This is the album. They did control. Ooh, pure. Fracture. How did I know that? Uh, I seem to be getting to know this band. Well, they, really uh, well. Because this is yours and Meow's band. They play, they play Fracture, which is always open uh, song. They play Control, Pure, which is the cover of Gary Newman's track, because everybody loves. Um, Ooh, but signed. One thing I actually found out before the gig is because Cy Nig, who actually is the drummer when we were seen him before, actually left three weeks before the gig. Because well, they, they did a gig in Whitby, which was around about Halloween. <laughs> and then, All yeah, the way out of uh, He left before a bit, a bit. I don't know what happened there. But yeah, he said the drummer just. Off. But, uh, but 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 that I know that uh, uh, Ian Wall and the band and my Echoes have, have had uh, never had you know like had lacking drummers before they they originally are a synth band uh, through and through. But they they, they I've like, seen I mean in my in my time here bef- uh, you know pre Crow Vault songwriters yeah. um, I've seen um, you know quite a few different members. Well, you were with us when uh, we went to the Institute. Mm-hmm. So, yeah, that was a drummer. Yeah, different drummer. So Nick, uh, on the last when we went to see him in May, that was it. We've had three drummer. guitarists since I've um, yeah, I've seen them. But the uh, the line of this time is the same as on before. Yeah, and yeah. they got a good guitarist. It's like, it looks like a Jimi Hendrix sort of style. And he's a very humble guy. I mean, like you know, you go to him after, he's going, oh well played, and that. He's like, oh, thanks very much, man. <laughs> yeah, he's yeah. always talked to me. He's uh, I like the band ready for like rapport they give to people. Like, they uh, they appreciate the fans as well. And stuff, but uh, they played a lot. I played quite a few of the bands. They played a new track called Breathe, which is out in January. Breathe with me. No, <laughs> no it's, it's, it's not that. I think it's one of those tracks that's called Breathe lately. About uh, three or four bands I know are bringing out a crap. Tour. What's the what's total Breathe all about? Everybody's bringing it out. It's created by Needs. It's created by Needs. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> it's one of their lyrics, isn't it? And the fu- the mask so dark. Uh, okay. And Rhonda's the freak. Meow is the freak. Oh, she's she's, she's been. Um, <laughs> Freak is the only one I recorded separately because I normally record the whole thing. I recorded Freak, which I'll put a link down in this Freak. video, and I did that, I did that, because I was like, mucking about with a, an experimental phone of Sony, and... Because uh, that's the lyrics, the breath you breathe, right? Yeah, breath, uh, breath you breathe, yeah, yeah. Yeah, so yeah. that's breath, in it. Yeah, that's breath. Yeah. Some more breath. <laughs> so they took breath and made it a song. Yeah. So but what was your highlight of the night, then? My highlight of the night was, well, there's, there's always a highlight, multiple highlights for me of the night. It's this, this, the driving for the start. I enjoy. Yeah, uh, driving, that's true. It's like a road trip for me. And it's a night out, generally. Uh, but in terms of the bands, um, the madness, the sheer yeah. off the wallness of uh, yeah. the first three bands are just mental, especially the first one, wrapped in plastic. <laughs> I mean, he was off his. I mean, he uh, reminded me of like Harmar Superstar, right? So I was stripping off, like, you know, he's got a bit of a belly to him, but he, don't, he got loads of confidence with it. Wrapped in plastic, they're just the sheer shock value. <laughs> yeah. uh, that that's why it's called shock value. There we go. That's uh, you get uh, value for ten people. It's shock value. Yeah. <laughs> performance of the night. I know Ronda went away with a lot of happy memories of a naked, uh, <laughs> that naked dude. But uh, yeah, <laughs> my, my, apart from the echoes, because they do very well about drumming weather. Part of the night was definitely the web, the web for me. That's yeah, very good. I was impressed. I'm surprised that you go like you pick on them and go, oh, because to me, there's, there's, there's all of them are quite a. No, they're all different styles, but like, you zoomed like, in on that. Like, By the way, I like uh, the song as a uh, lot like the clean lyrics because it's something you've done on You can hear lyrics. it. Yeah, yeah. I like the uh, very dark lyrics. They had good levels. Yeah. Everyone else was a bit booming, right? And I like her, uh, she's not a really not, uh, like a opera singer or nothing, but I like, I like her outfit. There's a lot of things I like, but you know, like uh, the way she's dressed, oh. or, uh, they're moving as well. I like movement and performance as well. Yeah, yeah. So the, where, the, where, apart from Monica, as we see The keyboard guy moved. Yeah. He moved. He right. moved the mood. Like that. Actually, out of all the yeah instrument uh, instrument players, I think he was the most animated. Yeah. 